everyone, Katarina here. Thank you so much for watching this video today. In today's tutorial, I'm going to use this gorgeous autumn leaf design paper, which was designed by Monica Aka Paper Mona. And it was a collaboration amongst the three of us, Monica, Monica from a Crafting with Quilling Lady, and myself. We all designed as something for you to grab for completely for free and I will talk about that later in this video so please stay tuned, trust me it's worth it. You can also enter a lovely lovely giveaway but about that later again. Monica has already created a really nice fun fold card using this gorgeous design paper and I will link to her video in the description box below. You can go and check it out where you can also find then the link to download this paper completely for free. For the card I'm making today, I'm going to team this lovely paper up by this dream catcher that I've been dying to use for a while now on a, a card. And these are by Textures, designed by Luke Collins, and this is from the In The Stash collection, which I've had in my stash for a while, but I haven't recorded a video yet. The word dream I took out of the celestial world die cuts and you can see how lovely that is in size. I've layered that up three times. I will come back and talk about that in a minute when we will be putting the card together. I've cut the dream catcher out twice, once of plain black cardstock and then of white glitter cardstock. But this is not stark white. You will see it against the piece of paper here in a minute. It is more like an off-white and it's glittery. It doesn't show here as much. I did a little sneak peek here of the end result here. It's just to show you really all that glitter on that cardstock. It's very hard to capture it on camera normally. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to layer these up on top of each other, but in a way that the black one creates a little shadow behind that white glitter cardstock in there. So I'm going to pull the white one a little bit to the left and a little bit down. And with that, you can see how it creates that lovely shadow or the illusion of a shadow behind it. The crackling that you can hear in the background is from the fire. I haven't been feeling very well this week. So I have the fire blazing here and just keeping myself nice and warm. So a bit of an autumn feel with the fire crackling in the background there for you. To glue these die cuts on top of each other, I'm going to use my favorite technique on intricate die cuts like this. So I have squirted a little bit of a glue, a tacky glue, on a piece of acetate so I don't uh, dirty my mat up in there. And I'm working on a laminated sheet of A3 paper uh, because this just helps me again clean, keep my mat clean while I'm making this card. So I'm using a bit of a sponge and you can use any makeup sponge or any sponge that you have in your craft room and just bit by bit add a little bit of a glue onto the black die cut and then slowly, this one is sped up here, but I'm working very slowly here, offsetting the white die cut on top of that one. And now I have this gorgeous piece in here. It's very hard to see. Now you can see the black a little bit better when I had it on the white piece in there. I am using black for the card base and it measures five and a half by seven and a half inches. The measurements are so I can fit the dream catcher on it perfectly. I am going to cut away some of the front of my card base. So now I open the card up and from the front I'm going to cut away three and a half inches in width. This will leave me with a two inch flap on the front. So then I take the bit that I have cut away from this card and I'm going to cut this down again so I can use a two inch strip on the other side of the front of my card. This will make sense in a minute. The leftover I just put away and I will use it in some other crafts later. So now you can see how there will be a one and a half inch of a gap between the two pieces of black, uh, two inch white cardstocks. I hope this makes sense. So in here I just added a piece of white cardstock just for placeholder, just so you can see what I'm doing, because it would be very hard to see if it was black against black. And now you can see how I'm just adding some double-sided tape to this, because I will be using a piece of acetate uh, now and to use acetate I prefer to use double-sided tape rather than liquid glue I think it just sticks a lot better so now I'm lining this up perfectly with my five and a half by seven and a half inch acetate 
and I'm going to remove the backing of the other side as well and just lining it up again. So this is my card base essentially ready. It is now time to decorate this. I don't want those uh, glue strips there to be seen or double-sided tape strips even. So I've cut another two pieces of black cardstock of the same size, two inches by seven and a half. And I'm going to cover these again in double-sided tape and just tape them onto the front of my card again. I did that off camera and now I'm just giving a little bit of a clean to my acetate. But I will come back later on and remove all fingerprint marks anyway of that acetate. So the copper glitter cardstock that I'm using here, each of these pieces measure 1 and 7 eighths by 7 and 3 eighths. So it's just the 1 eighth of an inch uh, below the measurements of the black strips of the cardstocks in there. And after this, I'm going to cut down my pattern paper. Each of these will measure one and three quarters by seven and a quarter. Again, just one eighth of an inch below the copper cardstock. And I'm choosing which parts of the pattern I want to use here. And I really wanted to use the leafy pattern on the front and leave the rest for the inside of the cardstock. So I'm just making sure that the way I'm cutting this, I will have enough left for the inside, which will measure five and three eighths by seven and three eighths so again just one eighth of an inch below the measurements of the black card base and i've left the more plainer like i mean without the leaves for the inside because if i choose to write my message i can use blacking and write my message on that or if i want i can still add the white piece of cardstock to add my message on too and now really it is time to decorating at the embellishments and I have cut out the word dream three times of the black cardstock and I layered them up and I've printed out the word big just using my printer and some white cardstock and I'm going to layer this up against the black cardstock again that I've been using just the leftovers from that this will make it stand out a little bit more again and the theme for this card not only inspired by the paper by monica but also by her own card that she made it was a lovely inspirational one that said the sentiment she used said be fearless and kind of instantly i thought of this uh, dream uh, sentiment I, that i had and the dream catcher so it was kind of inspired by monica through and through so thank you very much for the inspiration it's really really fantastic so I've uh, layered or glued the word dream up on the same glitter white cardstock that I used for the dream catcher. And now I'm just adding a little bit of a glue and I'm really using the card itself as a guide in there to see where I needed to add my glue on the dream catcher. I didn't want to add any for the piece that will be showing through the acetate when I open the card. So now I'm just using uh, again that same liquid glue to add the dream big on the bottom right hand corner of the card. And now I thought I still needed a little bit of a bling in here. A girl can have enough mean, bling, can't we? So I find these in my stash, which I've almost forgotten about. I've had these for a while from our studio and these I picked up in the range uh, quite a while ago i can't even remember when so i'm going to use those lovely coppery color ones which matches perfectly with the glitter card stuck on the front of my card so i'm picking out two of the big two of the medium and two of the small size ones and i'm going to add them on the top right hand side corner and the bottom left hand side and these are uh, sticky anyway but i just don't trust that sticky on them so i like to use a little bit of a liquid glue in there as well now i lost one so i'm just looking for it i find it later <laughs> it was stuck to my leg when i was going to get changed into my jammies i find it <laughs> sticking to my knee <laughs> oh these things happen don't they in craft rooms so uh this is it the card is pretty ready you can add your message on either side um or even on the back of the card I think this looks fantastic. I never made anything like this and I really, really enjoyed pulling this card together. It was just such a lovely paper to use and a lovely design to make. And I really love this Dreamcatcher. I will come back to this probably in the future again. 
And this is the card ready. I really, really enjoyed making this one. A challenging myself to something different lately has been really, really lovely. So this is a close-up video just of the card trying to show you some of the shine and sparkle. I'm not sure what the camera picks up on, but it is looking really, really lovely. I mentioned at the start of this video that this is a part of a collaboration where you can get some designs for free. So this mandala was created by Monica from Crafting with Quilling Lady and she also offers a colored in version of this mandala. The autumn paper was designed by Monica from Paper Mona and I designed a digital stamp with this little gnome couple. And if you wish, you can also enter our challenge using these free designs, one or more of them, and you can win a beautiful digital bundle called Color Your World, designed by Monica from Crafting with Quilling Lady, which is such a wonderful digital bundle. It is jam-packed with papers, with SVG files, PDFs and sentiments, and it's lovely and colorful. So to claim your free designs, all you have to do, go to the links in the description box below, Check out each video where we use our own designs to create some lovely fun fold cards and in there you can also find the links that will take you to the free download. Thank you very much everyone for watching and for all the lovely encouraging comments and likes and subscriptions. So if you're new here and if you haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so and hit the notification bell so you will not miss out on future videos. I will be back very soon with another lovely tutorial. Until the next time, bye!